Good day. My name's Wilfred West from Locksport, Victoria, Australia. Welcome to Locksport, the home of online gaming, wonderful views, and Australian wildlife. I do hope you like these videos. If so, please subscribe. Good day. It's ten past twelve in the evening, and this is what I'll be smoking today. Now, this is a chuck silver side but it's a round round chuck silver side or round um or, or round beef they call it um it's very lean in meat uh, like fat wise it's quite a nice looking uh, thing i've never smoked one of these before i'm gonna try to get for the eternal temperature of, um of this um at say 140 to 100 and say 50 around those temperatures that's medium to medium to well done um and i'm also and i'll probably set it at the temperature at 220 to 225. now the seasoning when i got it from the butcher had garlic and herbs on it which is still got it on now i added an extra kosher salt all around it and this particular rub Sprinkle that around it to give it a nice bark and add some extra salt into it and to give that Hopefully that will penetrate into it. I'm going to let this sit and get up to room temperature while I organize the smoker So I do hope you like this little video um, Let me know about your comments and stuff like that I had a look online at what people were doing this and what they were saying the meat was and stuff like that Some people call it a round eye something like that um, Or beef round I think they call it and they were saying the internal temperature should be 120 but i'm going to try for 140 to 150 internal temperature setting at the um setting the uh, smoker at 220. well we'll continue on shall we welcome back now she's got up to 220. now there's a reason why i'm using the internal temperature um probe today is because I want to know the exact temperature of the meat inside as well as outside plus cooking time. Now I've cooked say a boneless chicken on this thing enough to know that I can put the boneless chicken in skin side down 250 40 minutes turn it over another half hour 250 all depends on the ambient temperature also outside as well the humidity and basically an hour and 10 minutes to maybe an hour and 20 minutes at the very most I'll have a perfectly smoked um, chicken that is tender that's juicy now now I haven't smoked this so before I'm gonna I'll check get it all set up I've closed this over normally I'll left normally I'll leave that open but it's taken a while to get this up to temperature <laughs> now first thing we do temperature gauge we get this set up I want to know the exact inside temperature. I'm looking at say 140 to 150 to actually um, to have it perfect. So let's put this in there and then we'll put the meat in there. And we'll... Now, let's drop this in. Try and get as much juices onto that. this into the um, tender spot onto the thickest part I should say. There I now simply close this over um, and I'm gonna let that smoke now. I'll put the timer on in a minute in a second or so take these gloves off if I can. Um, and what I'll do now is put the, um, the timer on just turn this around so now you can see the exact temperature of it I'll just try to see myself 
so you can see it's set at 220, that's what we're going to set up. I'm not worried about seeing the te food temperature yet. I can't put it set to 240 yet. So that gives an early warning sign of what temperature it's going to be. Uh, 140, sorry, that's it. All you have to do, hit confirm on that. Now, so, I haven't done anything else to tell it what to do. Now, with this, I'll make a note of it. Um, in two hours time, I'll probably turn it over. Um, and then, get, keep an eye on the, temp the internal temperature of the, of the product. And two hours before two hours turn up time, I'll turn it over, test it out. Normally, set things about 100 to 225, but today I want to do 220. Um, it's the first time I've cooked this particular product and I really want to give it a good cook and to know what I'm cooking at so I always set it at a bit lower temperature if I think it needs to be high temperature to get a bit of bark onto it um, I might try that next time I cook and that way there I've got an idea of how long I cook it for um, how uh, what's, what's the best temperature for the bar cat now this door should not be this door should only really be open three times the first time when you put the product in second time when you turn it over or you put the th oh, thermometer in same thing um i like if you do it now i'd put the thermometer straight and i'm not really worried about it and the third time is when you take it out any other more than that you just you'll destroy all the smoke flavor you're trying to build up into the product itself um anyway yeah, my hand got some the dust from the um, gloves on it, <laughs> white powder stuff. Anyway, I do hope you like this little video. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll show you in uh, two hours' time the um, and uh, when we turn it over. Um, at the moment, I'm going to get some figs off the tree. Wash my hands, get some figs off the tree, and look for some sugar snaps. You call, and we call them um, snow peaks. Anyway, you all have a great day, and I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, welcome back. Now, it's been in there for just over two hours, two hours and a couple of minutes, I think. Now, time is yeah, 20 past three. So I'm gonna let it probably go for another um, two hours, but I'm gonna turn her over. Have a look at that colour. Absolutely beautiful. It smells nice. We'll have a look at the internal temperature. It's 142. Um, you still want to smoke that for another another hour to two hours. So what I might do is knock the temperature down. What I'll probably do is knock it down to 200. I can do it here or I can do it on the um, what's the name pad. So I might just do it, do that. I want to smoke it for another two hours, at least four hours in the smoker because you've got a high temperature already. Uh, yeah, we'll see how we go from there. Welcome back. <coughs> Welcome back. Now, the time. Currently it is five to five in the evening. Now since we had the one o'clock back, so we actually five to six. Now what I had to do here is because I put the temperature to 180, 200 before, and that was not cooling the internal temperature down too much. I dropped down to 180. The internal temperature went up to about 164. Then I dropped it down to 155, as you can see here, and the internal temperature is 158, which I think is pretty much ready. It's been sitting in there for three hours and 36 minutes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to basically put the silver foil down and put this in silver foil and wrap it up um, in a towel and just let that sit there for about uh, say about 20 minutes or so till the spuds are ready and then I'll carve it up. So that's what we're going to do now. So we just get her out and we'll have a look at her. First of all, I'll set the silver foil up first. It'll be a lot easier to do that, and then I'll set it up there.
been in there for three hours and 38 <laughs> minutes. Now, oh, first of all. I think that looks quite good. I'm going to have to turn her off, I think. Grab that out in a minute. But we want to wrap this up. Uh, first of all, let's angle this down so you can have a quick look at it. Don't know if you're able to. That's it there. Try to zoom in if we can a little bit. That looks absolutely beautiful. So, what I'm going to do here is wrap her up and. Um, yeah, she looks absolutely beautiful, so I'm going to wrap her up. And by the time the spuds are ready, this should have then been rested enough in this. Still feels quite warm, so she should be rested enough in the towel. Not to worry about it. I don't want the blood to seep out when you cut it. I want it to go back into the meat. So, I'll show you um, what she looks like when she's all carved up with the spuds and all. When we carve her up, I'll quickly show you what she looks like. And then we'll show you the spuds in the plate and onion, onion, garlic. Yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, welcome back. Now the spuds have still got five minutes to go. So, I'm taking this out the silver bowl. That feels so warm still. <laughs> so now, we'll let it, have a look at this. And we'll carve it up. We'll let it rest for a, we'll let it rest for a fair bit, I think. There she goes. Now if you look at that, there's not much in the way it juices there. Which is quite good actually. Kind of surprising because you let it rest for a while and it does that, but anyway. Let's, we're just going to quickly have a quick look at that and have a taste test while the spuds are almost ready. <coughs> Colour looks good. Yeah, that's how mum likes how it's cooked. <laughs> now, what I'll do is I'll cut it in. I'll keep just cutting it down like this. Because that's perfectly cooked. It's got a nice smoke ring. Okay. Now we've got this piece. You can see the smoke ring there. It's quite a nice one actually. And you can see it's like a silver side, the texture of the uh, meat. See how it reflects it? Now, we will taste it. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Yeah. Well, very, very nice. Could have taken out a bit earlier, keep the juices in there, but I think that looks nice. If you look at it, yeah, you can see a bit of juice here. So it's still got some juices in it. I'll let it rest for a while. I'm just going to have to cut it nice and thin for people. Um, but other than that, really, really nice. 
Now, when the spuds are ready, I'm going to put them all together and have a quick look at that. Okay, welcome back. Now, that's all on the plate. We've got an eggplant, we've got the beef, onion, um, cucumber, and we've got garlic in there somewhere. Yeah, that's all on the plate. Now, I'm going to put the garlic in there and the garlic in there somewhere. Where'd you go? There's garlic there. And, and all the spuds, which are perfect. Just grab one spud. That's perfect. Mm, crunchy, soft and inside. Mm, absolutely fantastic. Now, that's what's left of the, um, the beef. And um, yeah, not much, not much left out of that. But that'll be ready for tomorrow. Like tomorrow will be a nicer flavour. So what, you can see that smoking right there. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I, you know, I had to turn it down because I really wanted to. I didn't want to overcook the meat. I wanted to get that perfect um, balance in there and as, as I'm happy with that one. I gave some to the gentleman across the road. He's 91. I gave him some tea, I gave him some game, mum's got her, and this is my little bit. Anyway, my name's Wilfred West from Locksport, Victoria, Australia, signing off. Thank you again for watching my videos and all comments. So, welcome. You all have a great day now.